today I would like to talk about Docker for R. A good place to find what you can do with Docker for R is at this repo. Uh, here is uh, the resources repo in Two Degrees Investing Organization. If you navigate to issue number 25, you will see um, that you can use Docker for a few things. But today I want to talk about how you can use it to create an RStudio environment separate from uh, your computer. So sometimes you want to try something different or maybe your um, local environment isn't working. And uh, this is a great way to basically use RStudio uh, having as a back end um, a Docker container. So I explained uh, a little bit how this uh, happens in these issues so you can read it yourself. Uh, basically, I'm going to be typing uh, this one line here at the top. Sorry, it's super small. It's just a, um, an image from a computer. Not great. But you will see me typing it on the terminal. So you will see um, what it all uh, should look like. So let's do it right away. So I'm opening here a terminal. Uh, I'm working on um, a Linux-based terminal. It's Ubuntu. Uh, if you're working on Windows, it might be a little different for you. And I'm also assuming that you have Docker installed already. I'm not going to show that now. Um, so I'm going to start basically um, copying the, the line that you see here. Um, so let's um, do uh, that. Docker, well, actually, I have it apparently typed here. So I'm going to reuse the, um, the command that I typed before. So let's see if this makes sense uh, and let's walk through this slowly. So let, let me make this a little smaller so it fits in one line. So um, we are using Docker. We want to run a container. Um, I'm using the remove flag because I want this to be an ephemeral container that will kind of disappear when I finish my session. But you may want to uh, not do that if you want the container to remain after um, you start it. So I'm going to use remove, but you may not want to do that. Uh, here we are saying that we want to create an environmental variable called password. Um, and I'm just using the toy password one to three. Uh, here we're saying that we need to um, map a port. Basically, how do we get our studio? Um, how do we get an interactive environment like our studio working with a back end on Docker? Well, basically, we need to map the Docker container to um, your host computer. So basically, you need to access the container from your computer. And we are going to be using the web browser as an interface. So we say 8787 is the port at the host, and 8787 is the host at, in the container as well. And now um, it is generally useful to create um, a volume that maps uh, your local host computer with the container. So basically, you want that container to have access to folders and files that you have in your computer, right? So for that, we use what's called a volume. So minus V creates a volume between something that lives in your computer. In my case, the folder that I care about that has all my R projects is here in uh, under home Mauro git. So this part of the path uh, points to the folder that I want to have access to from our studio once it is available to me from the web browser. And then this other half of the path uh, maps what would be the equivalent uh, path on the container computer. So in the container computer, it is home our studio. So we are mapping my Git folder inside my home directory to um, home our studio. And then here we say that we want an interactive um, session. And uh, now the end bit of this, the last bit of this um, command is, is saying that the image that we want to create this container from is this particular image here. So Colin Fay RCI Tidyverse. I like this image because it already includes the tidyverse, which is a bunch of packages that you then don't need to install um, yourself once you launch the um, RStudio instance that you want to work with. 
So it kind of gets you um, a lot of the things that you most commonly want to uh, work with. So I'm going to run this command. As you can see, um, the terminal ran a bunch of commands and it's kind of running. There is this uh, this you know blinking cursor here saying that this terminal is working. It's working for me, and it's doing something that I'm not able to see. What is that thing that is it is doing? Well, it is making accessible to me our studio from the web browser. So let's go to the web browser here and let's um, let's uh, type localhost. So localhost 8787 or 8787 to 8787 should get you the, oops, actually no, localhost, sorry for that, localhost 8787. I thought that if I typed here 8787, it would work. Um, it didn't, instead it kind of looked for um, Googled 8787, I'm kind of surprised by it, but I'm not going to be distracted because that's not the point that I want to make today. So you can just type localhost 8787 and you will be um, prompted to type a username and here it's going to be RStudio. This is the way it is. And for the password, it is the one that you chose when you know we run this command. So in this case, it was 123, right? So we type 123 and I'm going to click sign in. And here I have our studio. So let me now uh, maximize this window. So this terminal is going to be living there on the back end, just hosting the service that I need to run. Um, let me close this because we don't care about this. Don't save. So uh, what we see here is an interface, um, an RStudio interface. You might be familiar with this. Um, let me clean this environment. Um, and here is my the home directory of um, the Docker container, and it's mapped to the folder Git in my computer that contains all the projects I care about. Um, so, for example, I may want to explore this particular project, um, and uh, and here I am. So I could set my working directory here now. and uh, I can start working with this package. So I know I may want to open this file and and start writing some code. So that, that is all I wanted to show you. So if I print, for example, print wd, I'm oh, sorry, that is um, from a terminal. If I do um, get wd here, uh, this is uh, where I am right now, right here. As you can see, I'm now uh, in an interface that looks exactly or almost exactly as it could look like uh, in your own local computer and you have access to all the files so you can try um, whatever you would have tried in your computer. Now you can try it with the backend on Docker. Uh, actually, to prove that, let's do, um, let's get some info, system information. Let's see what we are working with now. Um, so as you can see, this is running Linux. Uh, even if you are working on a, a Windows computer with this setup, you could be having access to a Linux computer. Um, what version of R are we running? Here is running 3.6, for example. Uh, and that's uh, interesting because if I, in a terminal now, if I run R in my own computer, this is the host computer, not the Docker container. You can see that I have R4, right? So that's cool because it means that via containers, you can have access to different versions of R and maybe you don't want to change your local environment and you want to stick to whatever version you're working with, but you want to access a different version for testing or for whatever reasons. And then Docker might uh, be um, a great solution for that. So that's all I wanted to show you. Then uh, thanks very much for listening.